Hi and welcome to the Alt Code channel. In this video we will see how to install and configure Visual Studio Code, the most used and preferred code editor by most programmers in 2021. Also, I will show you a couple of plugins that I personally use and that make it very easy the task of programming. In addition to being totally free and open source, Visual Studio Code supports a large number of programming languages, and if we go to its official website, we can see that among this list of languages, there are some such as HTML and CSS, JavaScript, Python, C, and many more, which we can install through extensions or plugins from inside the editor. Okay, so the first step to download Visual Studio Code is to go to its official website in the download section through our browser or by following the link that I leave you below in the description. Here, as you can see, we have many options for Windows, Linux, or Mac. We choose the option corresponding to our operating system. I have Windows, so I choose this, and we click. The installer download starts automatically. We wait for it to download. And when it's done, we open it. Okay, so now we are within the installer and the first thing it appears is the license agreement. We just have to accept it and click next. Here we are shown the path in which the program will be stored. We just click next, next, and here we mark the option to create a desktop icon. Next and install. We wait for the green bar to complete. And as you can see, the installation is complete. If you want to open Visual Studio Code automatically, leave this option checked and click on finish. Well, we are already inside Visual Studio Code and the first thing it appears to us is a web home page, where we can make some changes and configurations. However, so that you can make those changes in the future, I am going to close it and explain it to you directly from here. Ok, so the first change you can make if you want is the language. To do that, you will have to go to the extensions in the side menu bar and search for your language. In this case, I am going to search for Spanish, for the Alcode Spanish channel. We choose the option with this icon and that says Language Pack and we click Install. In order to change the language, it will be necessary to restart Visual Studio Code. The next change we can make is the color theme, that is, the background and code colors. We go to the settings wheel down here and click on color theme. As you can see, if we move up and down with the arrow keyboards, we can see the preview. I like the default theme, so I leave it like that. Another change we can make from the settings wheel is the font family and size. We go to settings, text editor, font, and here we can change the font family and the size. As you can see, in the settings section there are several changes that I leave you to explore since I do not consider them very relevant. Taking a quick view at the Visual Studio Code interface, we see that here on the left we have a side menu bar. In the first location of this menu is the Explorer, where we can open and create new folders in which to save our code files. In this case, we are going to create a new folder in the desktop, called New Folder. We create it and select it. As you can see, Visual Studio Code is updated, and now our new folder appears here in the Explorer. In order to add new files within this folder, we must go to the File tab and click on New File. A new tab will be displayed in the editor asking us to select a language to get it started. To do that, we have to save the file, going again to File and Save, or by pressing the shortcut Ctrl S. 
In this case, we are going to create an index.html. As you can see, Visual Studio Code recognizes the HTML language and so is to us with this icon. One of the advantages of Visual Studio Code is that it has an abbreviation system and closed tag support already included for certain languages. In this case, in HTML, you can see that if we type HTML colon 5 and press enter, a whole HTML5 structure will be generated automatically. Now we are going to add in the body an h1. You can see that the tag closes automatically due to the closed tag support. And here we'll say hello world. And below the h1, we are going to add a paragraph that says welcome. We save the file, and now we are going to create also a style sheet file. Again, file, new file, and save it as styles.css. And here we are going to give to the H1 a color red and a font size of 48 pixels. We save it and include it into the HTML. The next option in the side menu is the browser, where we can search for keywords from our open files. As you can see, if I write H1 in the search results, we can see that this keyword appears in both files, in index.html and in styles CSS. And if we click, it takes us to the line of code in which, is, in which it is located. Another very interesting browser is the file browser that we can open with the shortcut Control P or by going to the Go tab and selecting Go to File. In this browser, we can search files by name. It is very useful when we are working with large projects and we have to handle many files. The next option is the source control, where we can connect our code files through Git to, for example, export them to GitHub. It is not an option that interests us much now, so we move on to the next. Continuing with the menu, we have the run and debugging tab, where, as the name says, we can run and debug our files. If I go to the index.html and press the button, we can see what happens with our index and style files. Here we have our h1 that says hello world and the welcome paragraph. If I minimize, we can see that here at the top, we have a controller to pause, restart, and stop the execution. And here at the bottom, we have our debug console with its terminal and the problems. We can close the debug console if you want to reopen this terminal, you can go to here in the three points and click on debug console. And here it will appear again. But now we are going to close it and stop the execution. If we continue with the menu, we finally come to the extensions tab that we saw before in the basic settings. As you can see, we don't have any extensions installed yet because we didn't change the language. But don't worry, because later I will show you how to install them. If we go now to the top menu, we can see that here we have also many options. The first of which is the File tab that we have already seen before. In this tab, you can create and open new files and folders and save them. Another very interesting option is to close folder. Because if you leave a folder open in Visual Studio Code, the next time you will start the editor, this folder will appear in the explorer. So if you want to clean it or you don't want it, the next person who opens Visual Studio Code can see your projects, you should close it. The next option is the edit tab, where you have basic controls such as control set, cut, copy and paste. Next to the edit tab is the selection tab. Here you can select all the lines of your codes 
or copy them up and down. Continuing with the top menu is the View tab. Here you can control the side menu and also you can open the command palette where you can execute commands such as, such as cut or paste more quickly without having to know the keyboard shortcut or its location in the menu. To open this palette, you can also press the shortcut Ctrl Shift P. Another view tab option is the editor layout. Here you can add columns or rows to the editor's tab. In this case, I'm going to create a new column and drag the styles file into it. As you can see, we can now view both files at the same time and edit them. If you want to come back to the single column layout, we just have to look to the editor's layout again and select single, or do the same as before and drag the files to the first column. The next option is the Go tab, from where you can open the file explorer I showed you earlier. The rest of the options of this tab aren't so interesting, so we move on to the next one. Next is the Run tab, just like the tab we have on the side menu to run and debug our code. The next tab is the Terminal tab. Here you can open a new terminal with its debug console and the Problems tab. And finally we come to the Help tab, where you can search for documentation or check for updates that the Visual Studio Code team is launching. Well, and to finish, I am going to show you the plugins that I have installed and that I consider the most useful and necessary for Visual Studio Code in 2021. For this, we will go to the extension section in the left side menu and go to the Explorer. Before we start, I want to remind you that for the plugins to start working, it will be necessary in many cases to restart VS Code. So don't panic if you install an extension and don't see the changes at this point. The first plugin on the list is called AutoClose Tag from Jun Han. As I mentioned earlier, Visual Studio Code already includes Closure Tag support, but this is only available for HTML and a couple of other programming languages. With AutoClose Tag, we are expanding this list of languages in which tags are automatically closed. These languages include PHP, JavaScript, or XML, among others. The following plugin is also from Jun Han and is called AutoRemain Tag. With this plugin, we can edit a tag without having to modify both ends. If, for example, we want to modify the h1 that we have created in the index.html, first it will be necessary to change both the opening and closing tag. But with AutoClose tag, this is no longer the case, since we will be modifying both ends simultaneously. The third of the plugins is Material Icon Theme by Philip Kiev. This is a purely aesthetic plugin that has no other function than to change the icons of the code files that we have created. It may seem silly, but when we are working with large projects that include different programming languages, it will help us a lot to distinguish the files and the languages in which they are written. The next plugin on the list is Pretier, developed by Pretier. This plugin will allow us to format our code in a way that is much cleaner, more readable and well structured. It is especially useful for those people who are a bit messy when programming or want to read a plain file. For this, the only things we will have to do is go to our file and open the command play through the shortcut Ctrl Shift P or from the view tab. Inside the palette, we type format document. Next, if it is the first time that we use this plugin, a tab will be opened in which tells us that there are different sources to format our code. We click on Configure and select the Preter option. We press Enter and as you can see, our code has already been clean and well structured. And reaching the end of the list, we find another very interesting plugin to format our code and that will facilitate us the task of reading and understanding it. Its name is Bracket Park Colorizer 2 
from coin rods. And basically what this plugin does is assign a different color to each pair of parentheses, brackets or braces that we open. So that later it is much easier to identify which is the opening parentheses and the closing one. In addition, we can add as many colors as we want and modifying the existing ones. To do this, we will go to the settings wheel and select the option Colors Edit with JSON. Here we can add as many colors as we want in RGB format, hexadecimal or by color name, as long as it is valid and the system recognizes it. And as the last plugin, I would like to show you Open in Browser from Tetcher. This plugin is an alternative to the run and debug tab to run our code more easily and faster. To do this, once the plugin is installed, we will select our default browser from the settings wheel. In this case, I select Chrome. And then we will go to the file that we want to execute and right click. We select the option Open in default browser. And as you can see, our file runs. Or we can also select the option Open in other browser to select a different browser than the default one. And all this has been Visual Studio Code. We hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments so that I or someone else can resolve them for you. And if you want to be part of the Alt Code community, do not hesitate to subscribe to the channel as we will bring more videos and tutorials on programming and software. Also, if you have any video suggestions or want to see a specific tutorial, you can also leave it in comments and we will try to bring it as soon as possible. Again, we hope you liked the video. See you in the next one. Bye!